As I promised you last week, we would have a rather interesting show this week as we look at how the United Nations was formed. One will ask, what is the United Nations about? Well, you need not worry, because in this week's episode, we are going to talk about what the United Nations does. We will also look at the situation in Darfur that our delegates are going to discuss. Then finally, we will look at our mode of selection of our delegates to the United Nations Security Council. But as the storm advances across the ocean, it is tracked by satellite. Ships are directed to the shelter of safe harbors. People are warned to evacuate. It's a coordinated response made possible by the international system that shapes our world, the United Nations and its family of agencies. When natural disaster strikes, the United Nations is often the first on the ground working with governments, aid groups and volunteers to bring emergency humanitarian relief. This is just one aspect of the UN's work, which includes bringing clean water to communities in need, vaccinating children, helping farmers to improve their harvest, and much, much more. But this is not how the United Nations started. After the devastation of World War II, the world needed a workshop for peace, a way to avoid the scourge of war. The solution? An assembly of nations where leaders of countries big and small could debate and seek consensus on common action. Today the United Nations is the one truly global forum with 192 nations represented in the General Assembly. It's the 15-member Security Council that focuses on peace and security taking action to avert war, resolve conflicts, and limit armaments. It hasn't always worked, but since 1945, the UN has brokered countless peace settlements, and it now keeps the peace in many places across the globe. From Haiti to Lebanon, from Timor-Leste to Liberia, from the Democratic Republic of Congo to Sudan, and in more than a dozen other missions around the world places where others cannot or will not go. Places where innocent men, women and children have been forced to flee and have nowhere to go. At home was war. We never knew who was fighting. We were sad to leave and one day we want to return. For some 30 million refugees and displaced persons in more than 100 countries, the United Nations family is providing blankets, tents, books and ways for people to restart their lives. Please help stop the war for the sake of the children. There are as many as a quarter of a million child soldiers in the world. The UN fights for their freedom and helps them to be children once again. And for people in some 30 countries plagued by landmines and unexploded bombs, the UN helps defuse the threat of fatal or crippling explosions. We have uh, saved uh, thousands of lives. When the guns fall silent, the UN helps to build national institutions, trains the police, assists the justice systems, and supports democratic elections. To sustain peace, development is needed. Development that includes the poorest, almost one billion people on Earth, one out of every six who struggle to survive on less than one US dollar a day. World leaders have formed a global partnership that sets eight goals for humanity, collectively known as the Millennium Development Goals. To end extreme poverty, to combat disease and hunger, to promote gender equality, and ensure environmental sustainability. Much remains to be done by the target year 2015, but a real difference has already been made in people's lives. In improving maternal health by providing health care to pregnant women. In combating the deadly impact of malaria, especially in Africa, and in fighting HIV and AIDS. I did the test. My husband also did the test. Both tests were negative. The UN has seen great success in combating disease. Smallpox has been eradicated. 
Today, the UN is making strides in tackling polio, measles, and other preventable diseases. We can point to undeniable progress. Three million more children now survive each year. An additional two million people receive treatment for AIDS, and millions more children are in school. Schooling is a basic human right, one of many enshrined in the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, adopted in 1948. Decades later, it is still the standard against which all societies and all governments are measured. No government today dares to say that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is none of the business. Still, for all too many, respect for the dignity and rights of human beings everywhere remains a distant vision. The United Nations dispatches independent experts to investigate complaints of human rights violations and urges governments to uphold their responsibility to protect civilians. Today, more than ever, the world needs united action to face the many challenges of the new millennium. We hold the future in our hands. Together, we must ensure that our grandchildren will not have to ask why we have failed to do the right things and left to them to suffer the consequences. The consequences of a planet in peril. Today, the United Nations is urgently supporting its member states in partnership with civil society and people of goodwill to reach a global, comprehensive and effective plan of action that will address climate change. Uniting in action for the common good. That's what the UN is all about today and in the future, so that years from now, whenever and wherever the clouds gather, people in need can still find shelter from the storm. Well, let's test the amount of information you have gathered so far in our What Do You Know segment. Text the correct answer, A, B, or C, to our short code 1406 with the prefix lifelink. I can see the colors of a rainbow And I can feel the sun on my face I see the light at the end of the tunnel Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great stuff, man. We got some beautiful stuff there. Hundreds of years, the shit's been going on, killing each other. You seem almost proud of it. Fuck. Yeah. I know you're right. I'm trying not to think about it. A civil war erupted in Darfur in 2003 between the government of Sudan and its allied militia and other armed rebel groups. Violence erupted when rebels began attacking government targets claiming the impoverished territory was being neglected. The rebels claimed black Africans were being marginalized in favor of ethnic Arab groups. So it's not Muslim against Muslim, but it's more than that. It's Arab against African. Yeah, Arab totally against the as for African. Yes, pretending no, this is Muslim, our brothers. The pretending. The government retaliated, recruiting Arab militia fighters, resulting in violence that has led to the displacement of millions of people and the deaths of thousands more particularly during the first two years of the conflict. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people were killed. Now this happened because when, when the uh, sanctions were issued against the government, the Janjaweed come through and this is the consequence of that. Fighting continues between the government and the now splintered movements and 1.8 million people are estimated to be internally displaced.